Hello, everyone. Lovely to see you all. I think we'll just wait a minute as people are still coming in before we start. Welcome, everybody. If you need uh, translation, we have um, English uh, to Spanish. And if you just hit the uh, interpretation button um, at the bottom um, of your screen and select uh, Spanish, if you need the interpretation, this webinar will be in English. And I'm going to hand over now to Carlos. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Mombasa. Oh, sorry, we are not yet in Mombasa. I thought all that we are already in Mombasa. So, welcome. So happy to have you here, and um, thank you for coming to this webinar. This is, according to my knowledge, the first time we are doing this to meet Half Term World Council. Maybe it's happened in the very far past. But in the recent past, at least the last 30 to 40 years, we meet every four years as a movement. We have many other meetings, but the question is why we are meeting in Mombasa. Because we agree on our collective strategy. You'll be pleased to know that wherever I go, in all the corner of YMCA world, Vision 2030 is on the agenda. Some already adopted, those are planning to do. And the amount of engagement around Vision 2030 is, is big. But to wait for four years to know what we have done will be too late because we are in a very fast changing world. Things are changing so fast, we need to be adjusting quickly to things. So halfway, from the adoption of Vision 2030 and to the level where in 2026, we might already talking about what happened after 2030. We want to come together. And we are saying very clearly, this is not just an event. It's to see how our view built the foundation of this global big ship that is going to drive the impact YMCA want to have in the world? How do we drive our strong position to influence the next generation of Vision 2030 that the UN is going to come from with? How are we going to drive a sustainable impact in our community, in our nation? So we are doing different type of experience already across the world. We need to consolidate that. We need to take the lesson. So that by the time we go to Mom, uh, Toronto, and by the time we'll be talking about 
getting ready to engage with multilateral decision maker on what our communities and young people are saying, we can attract already good learning and have good advocacy position. So yes, we want to advance our collective work on Vision 2030. Yes, we want to foster new collaboration and partnership. We want to be the artisan of this new YMCA driven by impact, a YMCA that have influence across borders. That's what we are doing. And we believe that doing it now to accelerate our learning, to accelerate our ambition is quite very important. So we really welcome you to mobilize the people around you. All of you are Vision 2030 um, driven people or organization. You are welcome to Mombasa. And I want to ensure you that we are doing all the best, all we can to make sure that is very, very unforgettable moment in the history of our movement. But enough of me talking. I need to hand over to you, uh, uh, Perry, but feel warmly welcome and uh, looking forward to see you in Mombasa. I will start my journey soon from Mombasa. You'll see me there. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Um, and um, before I start, um, and for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kerry and I'm the uh, Global Events Coordinator um, for World YMCA. But I'm going to hand over um, to my colleague and peer, uh, Jared Masima, who is the National Secretary um, of Kenya, um, to welcome you to Kenya. Yeah, thank you, Kerry. And thank you everybody who is in the meeting and the Carlos for that introductory remarks. I wish to take this earliest opportunity to welcome you to Kenya, a very good country, beautiful city along the Indian Ocean, because Mombasa is along the Indian Ocean. This is not the first time we are hosting such a meeting. In 2012, we had a big meeting of this nature where we had over 150 delegates from all over the world in Nairobi. So this is not the first time. Kenya is a good country, very beautiful. You'll be able to uh, meet uh, people who are very good, hospitable people, ready to serve you. And you'll be able to sample a number of things, African cuisine, of Kenyan food, many programs uh, within uh, Kenya and the Mombasa in particular that speak to Vision 2030 pillars. If you like also, you can have a safari before the, the, the summit or after the summit where you'll be able to see the big five in our national parks. Some of them are not very far from, my, uh, from Mombasa city. Just 150 miles away from Mombasa, you can go and see the big five in the really uh, habitat where they live. The venue where the meeting is taking place, superb, very nice, it has everything. If you want to listen to music, if you want to have one for the road, it is there and it's a very good venue with very excellent facilities and everybody will be coming, will be happy to be there and they will have a very memorable event. And that's something to think about as they uh, move into the future. So as Kenya YMCA, we are ready to receive you to Kenya and uh, make sure that you are comfortable uh, as our guests and that we're ready for you. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. So I think we have um, a mix on this uh, uh, webinar of uh, colleagues who have already registered um, to attend Mombasa um, and some who haven't. Um, and Makita, I think we've got um, a quick poll to just uh, check that out so we can make sure that we are um, giving you the right information according to whether you have already registered or not. So if you would just quickly fill in that poll, that would be great. Okay, so we're about 60, 40, 60% roughly have registered um, and 40% haven't. So that so that's really, really helpful. Um, 
Thank you for that. Um, so the purpose really of today is to provide um, a bit more information for those of you who have not yet registered and are wondering whether it would be helpful to do so, but also a bit more information about uh, the booking process, but also about where we are in the planning for the summit for those of you who have registered. Um, so Makita, if we could share the presentation, that would be great. So let's go to the next slide. Thank you. And this will give you an overview of what we're going to cover. So um, we're going to start um, with a bit of a, a look at the summit purpose, um, then a wee bit about the delegate profile. Um, I'm joined by my colleague, Mike Bromfield, who is um, responsible for um, a lot of the content um, for the Mombasa Summit. And he's going to talk us through delegate profile, the, the agenda for the summit um, as well. And then I will have um, a bit of a, a chat about the venue, um, about some frequently asked questions that we have heard people coming up with and then kind of dates and booking process call. Um, and then at the end, um, we have some time for questions. So if people have got questions, then there's absolutely time to take some of those. So Makita, if we move on to the next slide where we can start to talk about the summit pur purpose and ambition. And, um, you know, Carlos was, was quite right in saying, obviously, this is a really strategic midway point between the two World Councils of 2022, uh, 2022 in Aarhus and 2026 in Toronto. Um, and so we are not... Um, there, there is no governance happening at the summit in, in Mombasa, which really leaves us free to um, to do a, a bit of a kind of a deep dive on our work, on all of our collective work, actually, around Vision 2030. So that could be work in a local YMCA, it could be work nationally, or it could be international and global work together. And it really is an opportunity for us to build our collective skills um, to um, begin to develop more common language together about what we're talking about in terms of Vision 2030 and actually begin to kind of um, talk more about how we are fulfilling or starting to fulfill our aspirations of Vision 2030, which are bold, um, really bold and really aspirational, as we know. Um, as you will know, some of the pillar groups for Vision 2030 have already started working. So the summit will provide an opportunity for those groups to come together and accelerate their work because so far all of their meetings have been online Zoom meetings um, and what a great opportunity to come together. And that's not just YMCA people. So there'll be part some of our strategic partners as well. As everyone know, knows, um, we've worked um, with Deloitte Australia um, on meaningful work um, and we are um, really keen to make sure sure that partners like Deloitte, um, like Accenture um, and other partners that we are working with or aspire to work with will be in Mombasa. But what's really important is that that is not just about the partnership at a, at a, at a kind of international level. It's, it, it then provides an opportunity um, for you as delegates at whatever you know, wh whatever operational level you're working at within the YMCA to begin to foster new collaborations and new partnerships that will help you with your work as well. Um, we also want to, of course, inspire delegates. Um, we want to share um, projects um, and ideas and pieces of work that, um, that are already being, de being delivered that actually are capable of being scaled and replicated in other countries. Um, and it's also really important that people go away feeling equipped um, with new tools um, or with new thinking. Um, so, for example, one of the groups that is working at the moment um, in supporting Vision 2030 is the group looking at measuring impact. Um, and they're doing a lot of work about actually how do we develop tools that enable us all um, in, our, in our local national um, YMCA settings to actually measure the impact um, of what we're delivering and know that what we're doing is contributing to something 
um, bigger and is part of our collective work on Vision 2030. Um, and I've already talked about partners um, and partners being at the summit, but um, importantly as well is the fact that um, it's an opportunity for us to really showcase YMCA what we're great at and what we're great at, as we all know, is is having a real breadth and depth of a ground game in local community in local communities that a lot of our partners really um, aspire to tap into. So it's a great opportunity for us as YMCA to showcase ourselves um, to to other partners as well. So that's just a very brief um, summary of um, the ambitions um, that we have for the summit. I'm now going to hand over to Mike and he's going to share a bit about um, delegate profile and the agenda for the summit. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Kerry. Um, when I uh, when I was getting dressed this morning, I thought that I would try and put my Vision 2030 clothing on. It's not an actual Vision 2030 t-shirt. They don't exist just yet, but um, I did go for a Vision 2030 yellow. Um, Nikita, could I have the, the next slide in the deck for me? Thank you very much. So the if you're sat one of the kind of 40% of people on the call that haven't yet registered for the summer or summit or maybe thinking, is this for me? Um, I just want to go back to the mission of Vision 2030. I think it's incredibly powerful because I think it's something that everyone here probably recognizes and wants for the people that your YMCA works with, as well as um, the, the world at large, to empower young people and communities worldwide to build a just, sustainable, equitable, and inclusive world where every person can thrive in body, mind, and spirit. And I think in short, if you believe in that, if you hear that and you think, yeah, that's what I want for the young people, the communities that I work with uh, or that my YMCA's work with, then the uh, Accelerator Summit is absolutely for you because it's for anyone connected to the work of Vision 2030 that might be senior leaders, strategic leaders, young leaders, emerging leaders, as well as the partners that we work with. So if you work with an external organization, maybe it's a funder, maybe it's a corporate entity, then the Accelerator Summit is for them as well. Um, we already know of YMCAs around the world that intend on bringing their partners with them to the Accelerator Summit because they see great value in showcasing the exemplar projects around the world that um, Vision 2030 is all about. And that's not just internal YMCA exemplar projects and projects on the ground in Mombasa, but that's also external projects around the world with those partner organizations that we all connect with in our day-to-day -day work as well. Um, so that's really an overview. You know, it's for people of all ages. It will be a, a pro, you know, the audience will be a group of people that are from all generations. Uh, we'll be fostering intergenerational dialogue uh, as part of it as well. Um, and if you're also sat there thinking, well, do I do any work on Vision 2030? The, the likelihood is the answer is yes, because Vision 2030 was created by YMCAs around the world. It might not have been by you personally. You might not have personally had input into it. But our local YMCAs, our national movements, our area alliances worked over many years to bring Vision 2030 into existence, to articulate what our shared vision is. What are those common areas of work that we have? Um, and what do we want for the future if we look ahead to Vision uh, to the year 2030? Um, and obviously that was then adopted um, in uh, the World Council in Aarhus, Denmark in 2022. So that's a bit on delegate profile um, and it's a very broad audience. Um, but I think the emphasis absolutely is this is a space where bring along those external strategic partners with you as well um, as your senior leaders and your junior emerging leaders, because there's space for all of them to get something out of the agenda. 
Could I have the next side, please, Nikita? Thank you. So the agenda, like a lot of um, summits, like uh, the one that we're putting together for uh, Mombasa, uh, will be a mixture of plenary sessions with keynotes and uh, discussion panels, uh, again, both internal and external. Um, and there will be, in a moment, I'll just talk about ways that we're also looking a bit of a call for content for examples of that from your YMCA's around the world. And we currently have a light, uh, an open call for uh, submissions. Um, Kerry mentioned the pillar working groups, those uh, strategic groups, uh, which are global in nature, representatives from different countries around the world that are looking at those areas of meaningful work, sustainable planet, just world and community well-being um, to look at initiatives that can be scaled and strategic partnerships that can be embedded in our movements. You can expect workshops and masterclasses. We are we are very keen that there is lots of space for people to be upskilled, for people to learn from others, but also have the opportunity to bring your successes, but also maybe your challenges, maybe those things that your projects or partnerships that you're working on that you're trying to work at, how do we uh, expand them or increase their impact? The Accelerator Summit is a space in which we can bring those together um, with those external partners and internal um, leaders to be able to advance that work. We'll also be using the concept of uh, tattoo tattoo groups, small learning groups. Um, it's a, a, a piece where we'll be bringing together groups of everybody at the summer will be put into groups of three um be a mixture of different people around the world um this very much leads into leans into kenyan culture um and there'll be check-in points throughout the summit um you'll be introduced pre-summit you'll work with them during the summit on uh, in small bursts um and the ambition is there that coming out of the accelerator summit you've built a a international, a small international network of people that can continue to meet and to mentor and upskill each other um, in the months and years to come leading up to Toronto. Um, and of course, a visit to Mombasa and to Kenya wouldn't be complete without immersing ourselves in the work that takes place on the ground in Mombasa. Um, and that's both with YMCA and with its strategic partners and projects that happen across and on the fringes of the city. So we have a day dedicated to going and experiencing the work that exemplifies Vision 2030 in the communities on the ground. Could I have the next slide, please? Thank you. So if you're a bit of a visual uh, learner like me, um, nothing says, um, a visual learner like a, a nice timetable so this is a bit of a breakdown of what you can expect from Mombasa so we'll be opening uh, on obviously on Monday the 21st of October uh, ahead of the opening ceremony we will have a women's leadership event um, we are blessed that the ooh, we are blessed that the venue is as uh, Jared said on the coast uh it is on by the beach and uh, it does have all the facilities of a high-end conference hotel um so we will open the first night with poolside cocktails and dinner um and then on tuesday the 22nd of october we move into the first full day of content you know an opening plenary that sets the scene that looks at where we've traveled thus far and celebrates those successes but also looks to the week ahead and the journey that we have to go on together through a mixture of internal and external keynotes, films, and stories from around the world. I've mentioned the tattoo tattoo groups in the afternoon, um, but also space for uh, strategic groups, the working pillars to come together, workshops and masterclasses. Um, we've made sure that there's lots of space for informal networking for anyone that has been to an international ymca event before or perhaps you haven't 
often some of the um, great conversations, the great work that emerges out of it can take place in those informal spaces. So you'll notice that there's a good amount of refreshment break, good amount of time for lunch, for dinner, and uh, afternoon tea as well. Um, so that's all built in. And then after that first day of understanding the journey we have to go on and why we're all here and what what we expect to get out of the summit, we then want to immerse everybody in Mombasa and in Kenyan culture through the experiential visits. On Thursday, we will then start to really jump into the, the meat of the agenda, which is to work with our external partners and internal initiatives to be able to look at how can we scale? How can we increase the amount of impact that we're having together through workshops, um, through guided um, conversations, through in conversation with pieces in with subject matter experts um, and more masterclasses. And that really takes us through all the way till Friday lunchtime when we come together for a closing plenary um, and the inaugural YMCA awards where we'll be um, awarding um, initiatives that exemplify Vision 2030. Could I have the next slide? I think, is it back to you, Kerry, after this? Ah, the exemplar project call, yes. So we are actively looking for projects and initiatives that exemplify Vision 2030 right now. Um, where these should be projects and initiatives that take place um, on a local or national level. Um, and we are asking you to submit those by the 25th of April. With those nominations and those submissions, and the slides will be circulated afterwards, so you actually have the link. And if somebody um, is quick, they might be able to drop the link in the chat so it's actually clickable for me. That would be great. Um, we'll be choosing a selection of those submissions to mobilize local film production crews to tell those stories of Vision 2030 around the four pillars. But we will also be bringing those some of those initiatives to showcase in Mombasa. So there is a great purpose behind submitting these. Um, storytelling will be a really big theme of the summit. The importance of not just doing the work, but making sure people know about the work and that we tell the story of the success and the transformation that we're having on communities around the world. And so one of the ways that we're doing this is through this project call, um, because if we don't know about it, then we can't tell the story. Uh, so we're hoping you'll be able to help us with this um, and uh, put forward those nominations. Thanks. And I'll hand back to Kerry. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, Makita, if we could have the next slide. Thank you. So um, I'm going to talk very briefly about the venue. Um, why Kenya? Why Mombasa? Well, um, I think the first bullet point is really um, a stark reminder that um, a lot of the our aspirations in terms of the challenges of Vision 2030 um, are impacted on a huge scale for the youth population of uh, sub-Saharan Africa. And in Kenya in particular, 75% of the population are under the age of 30, which is massive. Um, and so to begin to understand the impact of meaningful work, sustainable planet, um, a just world and uh, well-being, community well-being in that context helps us to um, ground our understanding of the urgency and the need um, for the work that we are all doing around um, Vision 2030. I think we were also very keen to make sure that we held um, the summit in a location that has less restrictive visa conditions. And yes, a lot of people will need to apply for visas, but it is an e-visa system. It is very easy. 
um, and um, very high levels of approval for visas. Um, because we know that both at the last World Council and the next World Council, there have been, there will be challenges, long lead in times for visas. Um, and so it's important that we uh, that we are somewhere where that doesn't that that isn't the same and where, um, frankly, a lot of our African colleagues um, are able to attend as well, which um, uh, has not always been possible with some of our previous meetings. We've already heard from Jared and both Jared and Narina and the African Alliance of YMCs um, are ready and excited um, to host us in Mombasa. Um, so if we can have the next slide, uh, please, Makita. The next couple of slides just are um, a bit of a photo montage of um, the facilities. You'll see top left um, the big plenary space that we will have um, for the summit. Um, top right is an outdoor um, stage where quite often some of the evening performances um, that the hotel lays on um, uh, are, are given. Um, it's also an area where you can relax, have something to eat, something to drink. Um, and the bottom right hand photo is actually of uh, the dining facilities um, and all of the food is available on a buffet style. And I can absolutely guarantee there is food to cater for everybody's needs. So if you like African cuisine, if you like American cuisine, if you like uh, European cuisine, there will be something there for you. If you like Asian cuisine, there will be something there for you that you like. Um, vegetarian, pescatarian, standard, all, all there. So uh, um, it is a superb, superb facility. If we can flip to the next slide, um, it will show you um, a picture of um, the standard uh, rooms. Um, we just got a little problem with the presentation there, Makita. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, this is the last page that I have in the presentation. Okay, so I will uh, show it from, I will share it then um, from from my screen, if I can just flick through to the right place. Yeah, yeah and I will share it then. Um, okay, so... Uh, great, thank you. So um, as you can, can everyone see that? Is that showing okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. great. Okay, good. So um, you will see there the uh, the slides of the venue that will show you the um, the the pools, um, the beach area that we will also be using, um, and the um, uh, one of the bedrooms, um, just to give you an idea. Um, if we uh, flick to the the next slide, I'm going to talk a wee bit about uh, safety and uh, security. Um, we have heard that uh, some people um, are concerned about uh, safety, about security. Um, uh, and I have to say that um, our experience when we went to visit the venue is that security is a really high priority. Um, it's actually a really high priority for the authorities um, in, in Kenya, um, but also for the hotel. Um, I've not been to an airport before where my bags were scanned before I was allowed to leave the airport, not get into the airport. And then my bags were scanned again when I went into the hotel. Um, before you get into the hotel, you have to go through um, gates, um, security scans of the vehicles um, going into the hotel, and then security scans, um, as I say, of people going into the hotel and also bags. Um, there are also a, um, a high level of um, security guards um, that are just um, milling around to make people feel um, safe um, at the venue. Um, and all of our transportation that we're using um, will be um, through um, approved providers. Um, and we have undertaken a full risk assessment um, and it is available um, if people would like to see it. Um, and I would also encourage you to check out, there is a section on the summit website there's a section of frequency frequently asked questions there's also a section on safety and security so if you've got any concerns then you know please do um have a look at it but um 
uh, we, we are confident um, that um, Mombasa and the venue that we have chosen um, is as safe as um, any of the other venues that we have um, used for, um, for previous um, events and gatherings. The other thing that I know um, a few people um, have been concerned about um, is the um, LGBTQI laws and culture in Kenya. And I did want to touch on this because some people have said, well, um, can I go? Can Is it safe for me to travel to Kenya? Um, and so we've, we have had a look um, at um, uh, some guidance um, and Intrepid Traveller does say that it is a fairly safe destination um, for LGBTQI travellers to, uh, to go to. Um, but that, that actually... Um, just a reminder that not just um, for LGBTQI individuals, but also for um, all individuals, actually um, just exercising a level of caution in terms of public displays of affection um, is important um, for everyone. Um, just respecting um, the culture um, of, uh, of, of Kenya. Um, so that's that's really and and if you've got other questions, there is a as I said, there is a big frequently asked question section um, on the uh, on the website. In terms of dates and the booking process, so um, uh, if people um, have not yet registered, the early bird closes on the nineteenth of April, um, and that. Uh, after that, then the price for the registration fee um, goes up. But just so that people understand the registration process, because it is a bit um, complicated. So um, once you register, you then need to wait for your registration to be approved by your national movement. And that for us is part of our risk assessment to make sure that we know everyone who is coming to and attending um, the summit so once your national movement approves your registration, you will then receive an email saying that your registration has been confirmed. And at that point, you then need to pay for your registration. If we then go on to the next slide. Once you have paid for your registration, you then separately need to book your accommodation. We have block booked um, basically all the rooms in the hotel. Um, we also have um, a sister hotel just down the road um, and we'll be putting on shuttle buses, which is basically the overflow hotel once our hotel is full. Um, and uh, you will receive, when you get your confirmation email, a discount code that enables you to book your room. And that's the special rate that we have negotiated with the hotel for the accommodation. And it works for both the Pride in Paradise, which is the, the venue that we are using, and the Pride in Flamingo down the road, um, further down the road. But um, you will first be pointed towards the Pride in Paradise. Um, uh, and that will be where you book your accommodation unless it has run out and then you it'll be at the Pride in Flamingo. Um, but but we we have um we have a good number of rooms um uh, in fact we have all the rooms available at the Pride in Paradise. Um, don't forget to book your travel um and your insurance um and again in the frequently asked questions there's some tips about travel specifically some advice about if you're traveling through Nairobi or not and what you need to do there so please check that out um. You do need to check whether you need a visa. And if you need a visa, you need to go back into your C-Vent registration to update your details with your passport details so that you can then generate a visa letter for your e-visa process. Um, and do also check your vaccination requirements. And again, um, we've got a bit of information about that in the frequently asked questions. Um, the other thing to say, is that the normal world YMCA subsidy policy does apply. So those countries that are eligible for part or full subsidies, um, those will be in place and those will be negotiated through world YMCA with 
the national movement. So if you are in a local movement, um, you need to check with your national council about the subsidy because there are um, limited numbers of subsidies per country. So I think that brings us to the end of the information that we wanted to share with you. We've already done the exemplar project so we can end the, uh, the sharing, thank you. Um, so uh, it's now uh, a chance for questions. So I'm very happy for people to put questions in the chat or if we can just go to full screen without the spotlight, Makita. And if anyone wants to raise a hand um, or has a question that they would want answered, we have uh, we have a little bit of time to answer some questions. Uh, yes, Mark, you can have a copy of the slides. I think uh, I think uh, Mike said that they would be distributed. Absolutely. How flexible is the mode of uh, payment? So um, uh, thank you for that question, Ezra. Um, at the moment, the uh, the payment mode on Cvent is via credit card. However, you can contact the World YMCA office if you want to do a bank transfer for the for the invoice instead of paying by credit card on Cvent uh, for the registration. The early bird, how much is the registration fee for early bird registration? Um, it is uh, 500 US dollars. Any other questions? So yes, thanks, Claire. So some some delegates have asked how they book additional nights accommodation before and afterwards. Do they have to do that directly with the hotel? So um, the module for the discounted nights runs from the um, anything from the 19th of uh, October through to the 26th. Um, if you do want additional nights, then um, you probably need to contact the hotel directly about that. Um, but we can we can give you um, a contact detail. Um, my my good colleague actually, Franca um, D'Angelo, she's waving now, is uh, is on the call. Uh, Franca from YMCA Canada, and she is dealing with all the logistics directly with the hotel. Um, so she's our main contact person with the hotel. So um, if there are specific questions about that, then um, uh, you could email us, and we can uh, we we can check that with the hotel for you. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Uh, so, um, Aidan, you are responsible for arranging your own flights um, unless um, you are from a country um, that is eligible for a flight subsidy. Any other questions? Happy for somebody to unmute themselves if they're able to, if they've got a question. Hi, Hi. Yeah, I just had a question that I put in the chat. It was in relation to um, the hotel and sort of the availability for rooms being available from set the Saturday before the 19th. Is tra transport from the airport to the hotel available from the Saturday also? So, um, so we have asked people if they want uh, want us to help them with transportation from the airport, but um, delegates have to cover the cost of that. Mm -hmm. But um, actually, um, a lot of the change agents are coming in on the nineteenth, so we will arrange accommodate. We will arrange transport from the nineteenth. Okay. What I would say is there. What we're doing at the moment is looking at when the bulk of flights are coming in mm. and then arranging transportation to meet those dates. However, the hotel also has um, a, a great um, taxi service that they can that, that that is very reasonable. Um, so we can book taxis for people as well. Absolutely. Okay. That's really helpful. Thank you. And thank you, with, with the flight details, is that the same kind of system as with um, the World Council, whereby do we put our, just our details of when we're arriving onto the event platform and then yes. the information? Okay. Yes, well. it's the same system. Thank you, Joshua. Yes. Thank you. Yes. 
Did I see it? Franca, Franca, come on in. Um, if we are bringing a spouse or family members, they should also register as well. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And and it's really important, actually, if you are bringing a family member and you want them to eat with you, you want them to take part in the gala dinner in the beach, you want them to um, come to the poolside cocktails and so they must register um, as a delegate. So they so they must pay the registration fee. Um, but that means that then they've got access to everything and the day when we're doing the experiential visits as well, please. Um, Thanks. Thank you, Franca. Okay. Looks like we have exhausted the questions. So it just, oh, Elor, please, you have a question. Yeah. Hello. Hi, I just wanted to put your ten draw your attention to a question you have on the chat box that says, is it possible to change the name of a registered participant later if something else happens or something comes up? Thank you. Sorry, I didn't see that. Yes, absolutely. You can change the name of a uh, uh, of a participant. Yes. Yes. Um, and if you're if you're unsure about the subsidy, I, I also see a question there from from Sri Lanka. Um, you need to check the subsidy policy for which countries get full subsidies and which get partial subsidies. Um, but we can provide that for people as well. So on the final slide was my email um, and also Makita's email. Um, Makita, who is uh, somewhere, he's doing all of the admin around this. He is managing Cvent. There's there's Makita. Um, so if you've got any questions about the registration system, then please email Makita at ymca.int. If you've got any general questions about the summit, then please feel free to email me, Kerry at ymca.int. Um, and we will try to um, answer all of your emails um, as quickly as possible. Okay. Well, um, all I think that remains for me to say is thank you all um, for participating. If you haven't already uh, registered and you're part of that 40%, then I hope um, this has inspired you to join the 60% of us on this call who are definitely um, going to be in Mombasa for what is, um, as Carlos said, a strategically um, significant um, summit. Um, and I'm just going to hand over to Carlos if he would like to close. Uh, thank you, Kerry. That's very informative. You know, I've not yet registered myself because I'm from Togo. Togo is eligible to uh, subsidy. I live in Switzerland is not eligible to subsidy. So I don't know yet how I'm going to handle that, but I'm still looking for advice about how I'm going to do it. But basically, we all have a question, include ourselves, and we be clear to help you. One thing I forgot, in Kenya, they drive in the wrong side of the road, like in the UK. So you need to be aware of that, but we'll make sure that uh, you are well protected. You you know, when you want to cross the road, you look at the other side for those who drive on the right side of the road. That's the only risk I will tell you, you will have. But, uh, you know, Kenya and UK are lying in many other things. Otherwise, in the YMCA events, you are more than welcome. We'll have a good time. Not just to have a good time, but we'll take Vision 2030 and the YMCA to the next level. So thank you so much. Thank you, Kerry, Mike, and all those behind this uh, meeting. Thank you for the World YMCA team. Thank you for all the NGS and our board members who are here. We are in this journey together. And let us make it happen for the sake of our young people and the sake of our community. So thank you very much. And bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you.